purposes. And we exercise our independence and our will, exercise everything, our desires, our energy, our activities, our resources for Krishna's pleasure. And then he goes on to say, Paramang yo mahad brahma. Now brahma is a, in this context means the total material energy, the total energy of creation, the root substance of everything. So that is emanating from Krishna. In one way, Krishna is everything. But in another way, Krishna is different from everything. Huh? Just like the sun and the sunshine. The sun is the source and the sunshine is the energy. But what is sunshine? Well, it's nothing but little particles of the sun. Huh? Light, heat, energy. But in another sense, it's separated from the sun. It's removed from the sun's body. So in the same way, Krishna's energy is nothing but Krishna. But at the same time, it acts as energy, not as the source. Krishna is the source, and therefore he's the controller of all that energy. Just like the sun is the controller of the sunshine. But uh, the sunshine is different from the sun, and so Krishna's energy is different from Krishna. So how can we say it's the same as Krishna and it's also different from Krishna? Huh? That's not illogical because it's spiritual energy. In the material world, two things are either the same or they're different. Uh, if they're same, they're one. If they're different, they're always separated. So uh, that's material logic. Spiritual logic is different. Something can be the same and different at the same time. And there's no contradiction in spiritual logic. Uh, actually, Krishna can make anything happen. Even if it's impossible, even if it's crazy by our standards, no problem for him. His will is complete. And finally, paraman ya parayanam. Para ayanam, the supreme destination. Uh, everybody is trying to reach some goal. And we have many different desires, many different ideas, what we'd like to do, where we'd like to go, who we'd like to be with, what we'd like to experience and have, and so on. But actually, all of those are fulfilled when we come in contact with Krishna. Krishna is the supreme destination. That means we go to Krishna after this life is through. Krishna says those who worship the demigods go to the demigods. But those who worship me will come to me. And he says, if you love me, if you serve me, if you dedicate your life to me, surely you will come to me without a doubt. And especially those who uh, spread this knowledge of the esoteric teaching given by Krishna himself, they are the most dear servants and there are no more dear servants than them. Huh? Krishna says very clearly in Bhagavad Gita, he says, there is never a servant more dear to me, nor will there ever be a servant more dear than the one who gives the supreme secret to the devotees. So anyone can preach, anyone can teach, but the qualification is you have to be realized. So put this process into use in your life. Put it into practical application. Do everything from this consciousness. And gradually you'll draw nearer to Krishna and he'll draw nearer to you. For every step that we take towards him, he takes 10 steps towards us. He wants us to be liberated more than we do. <laughs> That's why he's giving this esoteric teaching, to benefit everyone and to take us out of uh, material suffering. I like that story that Uddhava posted uh, about the barber. Uh, the barber is uh, shaving and giving a haircut to his client. The client is saying, you know, God is real. And the barber says, no, no, God doesn't exist. Come on, it's just a story. So uh, he was trying to convince the barber and the barber wouldn't understand any of his arguments. So he went outside in the street and he called the barber and said, hey, come here, look at this. The barber said, what, what? There's all these hippies walking around with long hair and beards and stuff. And the guy says, barbers don't actually exist. 
And see, the proof is all these hippies with long hair and beards. And, <laughs> and the barber says, what do you mean barbers don't exist? I just cut your hair what do you, five minutes ago. What are, you, what are you saying? It's impossible. It's illogical. Blah, blah, blah. So the guy said, see, the same thing is true of God. You say that God doesn't exist because there's suffering and so much nonsense and cruelty in the world. Huh? But it's not because God doesn't exist. It's because we don't go to God. That's our problem, not his. Huh? So even though it's our problem that we don't go to God, we don't take shelter of God, and we don't uh, cultivate the qualities of godliness, still he makes it possible for us to approach him through his holy name and through the process of devotional service. The esoteric teaching is there so that we can approach God. That's the purpose of it. And when demons try to suppress this knowledge, it's because they don't want people to approach God. They want people to be lost and suffering and weak so they can exploit them. Huh? That's why our mission to spread this knowledge is very important. And you all can participate in it. Start a local group. Invite your friends over to watch this podcast or whatever this thing is. What is this? A video conference. <laughs> well, I'm going to post it on the podcast too. But invite your friends over to watch it, you know. Uh, cook some prasadam for them. Sit down and talk with them and show them the video. Huh? Show them how you can type in a question and get an answer from the Babaji. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that we actually have an online community, spiritual community based on this esoteric teaching. And that it works. And uh, certainly they'll make a lot of spiritual advancement. Did we have some questions? Uh, not so far. Did we have some new people join? What were those bonks I heard? John. Ah, John. Hi, John. Are there any questions about this or about any aspect of the esoteric teaching? You mentioned that Krishna accomplishing anything he desires by his internal potency. What does internal potency mean? Can you elaborate on the relation between this internal potency, Srimati Radharani, and the Hare in the Maha Mantra? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> well, what is internal and what is external? When we look outside through the material senses, we see the material world, and that's external. When we look within, we see the spiritual world, or we experience the spiritual energy, or we uh, feel ourselves to be a spiritual being. Huh? So the internal energy is the spiritual energy, and the external energy is the material energy. It's always like that for us, and it's like that for God, too. He has his internal potency, which is spiritual, and he has his external potency, which is the material energy. And then he has a potency that's on the borderline between those two. And that's us. <laughs> we are the marginal potency. Uh, tatasta shakti. means Tatasta means on the borderline. So we're on the borderline between the material and the spiritual energy. And the proof is, when we look externally, we see the material world. When we look internally, we see the spiritual world. So the next part of the question is, relation between the internal potency. Well, the internal potency is ultimately a person. Krishna's potencies are all living, conscious, spiritual. That's what spiritual means. Spiritual means conscious, living, personal, individual, eternal, all those attributes of spirit. Huh? Just like if we look at our self, our spiritual self is eternal, conscious, personal. We have will, emotion, desire, cognition, memory. Huh? So many uh, personal qualities, so many, these are all spiritual qualities. And the proof that these are spiritual qualities is when the soul leaves the body at the time of death, all these disappear 
simultaneously. So that means they are qualities of the soul or spiritual qualities, especially personality, individuality, and consciousness. These are the highest level qualities of the spirit soul. Hmm? So when Krishna emanates his internal energy, his internal energy is also a person. And that person is called Srimati Radharani. When you see Krishna with a girl, huh, that's her. That's Radha. And when we address Radha and Krishna together, we say Hare Krishna. Another name of Radha is Hara. Hara means Krishna's energy. So we address Krishna's energy and then we address Krishna. Why? Because uh, Krishna is very mercifully inclined towards anyone who